Hello, and welcome to Cam Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Every weekday, a staff member or volunteer will be taking a closer look at a piece in our permanent collection and posing a question for discussion. If that interests you, check back every day at 10 a.m. for a new piece and a new conversation. So, my name is Kiara Galloway. I work for Visitor Services, and I'm going to be discussing Louise Nevelson's Nightscape 3 that is located on our second floor. Louise Nobleson was a Ukrainian-American sculptor who was most famous for her monochromatic, monolithic, and uh, monumental sculptures. So she was inspired very heavily by Cubism. And at this time, artists were trying to break free from Impressionism and find a more abstract way of representing their environments, their experiences, figures, and landscapes. And so she used a lot of flat shapes in her work, and she stuck to very monochromatic and singular color palettes and used mostly black, white, and gold. Although she was a sculptor, she forgoed these traditional materials such as bronze, precious metals, and stones, and she opted to use these more found materials. So we see her using a lot of like old wood scraps, old furniture, organ pipes, anything and everything found. And she created these large wooden forest-like, almost tapestry-like structures known as assemblages. And the word assemblage essentially just means a 3D collage. So yeah, she kind of coined this new term and this new way of making art. Um, Cause at the time, most sculptors were using, you know, and historically most sculptors were using um, bronze, stone, precious metals, doing a lot of foundry. And so she was pretty revolutionary for her time. So the large jet black structure known as Nightscape 3 that we have in the Cincinnati Art Museum is actually a smaller piece of a larger collection of nightscapes that are all on display all over the world. So Louise Nevelson actually referred to herself as an architect of the shadows, and this was primarily because she used mostly black, white, and gold in her work. And she felt like these colors were very muted in comparison to a lot of the more colorful, impressionistic work that we had seen prior. And so she felt like these colors were visually weightless and added a nice, like, stern element to her work that made it even more, like, monolithic. You know, when I look at Nightscape 3, it's very mysterious and dramatic, but at the same time it's really playful and musical and one thing that should be noted is that Louise Nevelson was actually really ridiculed for her work being too masculine and mysterious and you know she came about in the 50s and so there was just an assemblage of sexist comments sent her way where you know it's like oh women make um, lighter, more painterly work. Your work's too heavy, your work's too dark. And also because she was working mostly in sculpture and historically foundry and like woodworking and stoneworking were seen as like men's trades and not um, the work of women, which is very sexist. You know, she was ridiculed and told that she wasn't in her place, but she didn't let these sexist stereotypes or conventions limit her work. And she went ahead and made the work that she wanted to make and that she felt reflected her. So to polish this off, I'm gonna pose a question. So if you are a sculptor or if you were a sculptor, would you prefer to use more found materials such as wood scraps, old furniture, organ pipes? Um, or would you prefer to use more traditional materials such as like metal pours, um, stonework? Which do you prefer? What's your style? All right, so we're looking forward to hearing from you and thanks so much for watching. Bye.